Hello, welcome. Try this problem out and then press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, so they tell us here that they want us to find which diagram represents an angle alpha measuring 13 pi over 20 radians drawn in standard position and it's reference angle theta. Okay, so let's just go over a couple of basic definitions here. Let's talk about um, standard position first. Okay, so just imagine for a moment that you've got your y-axis and your x-axis and you're drawing an angle, right? Now an angle um, will have to start somewhere, right? It'll have to start somewhere and it will have to end somewhere. So it'll have to start somewhere and then it will have to end somewhere. And usually, typically, a positive angle opens uh, counterclockwise, which matches how the sun rises from east to west. Um, but with standard position, right, we know exactly where the start and the end are. This is not standard position. Standard position starts always at the x-axis, right? It starts there. That's our, that's our start. And then the terminal side is somewhere else opening, usually positive in a counterclockwise direction. It can open the other way, but the positive motion is this way. Now, because it's assumed <clears throat> that the angle starts on the x-axis, you'll often only see the ending side or the terminal side drawn. They won't even draw the starting side. So the terminal side will be drawn, and then it's implied that this is the angle we're talking about. This is the idea of st having a standard position. The next thing is the reference angle. Well, if you remember, they, were, they brought that up here. They've got a reference angle, theta. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we go here and we look at this, the reference angle is, in this case, this angle right there. Right? This is our angle, our reference angle, theta. Now, what is a reference angle, right? This is our reference angle. The reference angle is the angle between the terminal side and the x-axis. So here's our terminal side, here's the x-axis, that's where the reference angle is. So it's always going to be a positive, positive value because, you know, when you're reading an angle, you can read it in any direction. So we might as well read it in the positive direction. So when I'm starting, I'll look at this angle right here, I'm reading it this way. Um, it's always positive. Keep it simple. And the idea is that it's always between the terminal side and the x-axis. So for example, if the angle is here in the first quadrant, it's our terminal side, this is my reference angle, theta. If the angle is over here in the third quadrant, this is my reference angle, theta. If my angle is in the fourth quadrant, this is my reference angle, theta. In other words, it can be in different spots. Um, the idea is it's always between the terminal side and the x-axis. So th those are the things that are, we're talking about here. Now we go to our, our measurement. It's Let me zoom in a little bit. It's 13 pi radians. Okay, so you can convert that to degrees and then solve it that way. I'll show you how to do that. But I encourage you to actually use the radian measure to your advantage. Um, now, radian landmarks, let's take that real quick. Again, if we have an x and y axis, here's my y axis. Sorry, a little sloppy, there's my x axis. And the radian measure um, starts off at zero. This is half of a full rotation, so it's pi radians. All the way around would be two pi radians. That's the full radius of a circle, circumference of a circle. Here is halfway between zero and pi, or pi over two. Here is three pi over two. Why does it help us? Because with 13 pi over 20, let's just think about where this lives, right? So we have, uh, I'll write that up here, 13 pi over 20. Well, this is a little bit more than a half. It's not as big as pi, which is just 20 pi over 20. It's certainly bigger than 10 over 20, so we're going to write everything in terms of 20ths here. And it's certainly smaller than, this would be, let me erase that, oops. 30 over 20. My tools don't seem to be working there, so I'll just keep writing in green. This would be 30 pi over 20. And this is going to be over 20 as well. So it's 
uh, 40 pi over 20. So I'm just thinking, well, the angle lives somewhere, the terminal side is somewhere here. It's um, between 10 and 20 pi. So I probably should draw it up a little bit more, but the idea is the reference angle will be right here. And the distance between 13 pi out of 20 and 20 pi out of 20, what's that? Well, it's the difference between 20 and these numerators, 20 pi and 13 pi. It's 7 pi over 20. So the reference angle is 7 pi over 20. Okay, so let's look at our diagrams. Here you can see that the reference angle is drawn incorrectly. It's not; It would have to be on this side between the terminal side and the x-axis. So we can get rid of that for the same reason this one. Um, so it's either here I have a reference angle or here I have a reference angle. And notice that alpha is going in different directions. Well, this is the positive direction as the sun rises, so it's choice four. If it were negative, um, if it were a negative measurement, it could be in this direction. But negative 13 pi over 20 radians doesn't reach this far. It would only reach about here, oh, you know, this side down here. So that's, that's incorrect, right? Um, now, if you want to convert radians to degrees, we'll go back real quick to finish. 13 pi over 20. Um, you can do it in different ways, but usually what people like to do is multiply by 180 over pi. And then in the reverse, if you're going from degrees to radians, you multiply by pi over 180. This will effectively cancel out the pi's, and then 20 goes into 189 times, and 9 times 13 is 90, right? Plus 27, oops, which equals 117 degrees. And um, if we look at our picture right here, Right, you can see that's a, that looks like it's about 117 degrees. So if that helps you, you can use that strategy as well, but it's not really needed for this problem. All right, hope that helped.